So I've just got back from the Handmade Bicycle Show here in Melbourne where I was shooting this video. Now before we get into this video, what I wanted to do is ask for your opinion. What you're about to see is some incredibly arousing bikes. So what I'm going to do is list in the description area all the bikes that were on display. Then I'd love for you to make a comment below with your vote on which bike you like the most. And then I'm going to tally the votes and the winner, I'm going to approach that brand and I'm going to request that we do a comprehensive 10 minute review specifically on that bike. So let me know what you think below and let's get into the video. Good afternoon, mate. <laughs> it's all right. It's good, good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome. We're at, um, we're at the fantastic, beautiful um, uh, meat market. Uh, of course, we're uh, hosting here, which is fitting the Handmade Bicycle Show. Um, first edition of the show here in this format, as it is. And really, we're here to celebrate not just the bikes, um, of course, the bikes, but also the, the makers as well. Uh, a full cross section, so everything from your um, your roadie bikes through to your um, your bike packing numbers, uh, also your cargo style, anything, and everything you can possibly imagine. Yeah. Uh, and every material, steel, uh, unobtainium as well, yeah. uh, titanium, the whole lot. A lot of these guys and girls are uh, designing, engineering, manufacturing these stunning machines, these bikes, um, in on their own premise or in small factories they don't have retail shop fronts they're not you do not find these bikes in a traditional bike store so this is a, their platform to celebrate what they do and the, as a showpiece uh, to show, show their bikes yeah so Moro Cycles we're from Perth in Western Australia so with the name Moro is actually one of the indigenous names for the Perth region yeah um, here. We like our frames to tell a story. Yeah, okay. So this one's actually for me. And so with the indigenous art, which we've got two brothers, one did each each of the bikes. Yeah. On the forks here, the artwork tells a story about my journey in the bike industry, building frames. So we've been really making frames a lot busier in the last 12 months. Yeah, right. Through there. Why, why was it a 12 month process to get it sort of all ready to go? Uh, I went to the States and did the uh, tri frame building course right. through there. And then we had to get the workshop set up and then start developing our techniques to get our accuracy and everything, our procedures, and so that we're getting quality bikes, that's our goal. So a frame like this, with it all customised in the flat mount disc, and made to the individual, come in at $4,990. Okay, I'm actually also a chiropractor okay. as well, so the fit and everything's very important to me, and I've been well, into two wheels since I was this high, yep. racing motocross and mountain bikes and everything. Yep. So geometry, all that is very important, and so I spend a lot of time just working out, I measure the customer up and just working out how they want the bike to ride yeah, and going from there. Stumper, yeah. Stumper is um, an American brand based in Oregon. Uh, the, the word Stumper is a Flemish word. Uh, I lived in Belgium for about 11 years and it means matching a big gear. So it's kind of, a, that's our spirit of our frame is riding hard, riding fast. Uh, we build only ro uh, racing bikes, so road and cyclocross and track bikes. Uh, this here is a Taylor, it's our steel frame. It's uh, made of uh, Columbus Life tubing, Dedichai head tube. And then we offer it obviously in a lot of custom options, disc, rim brake, custom geometry. This is the Vincent, that's our new titanium model. So um, yeah, similar geometry, fits up the 28 millimeter tire. Yep. And then we have, uh, what can I say, a little bit different paint here. We use the naturally brushed titanium and then we have a special ceramic uh, satin finished paint that we bake on there. Yep. Uh, so it's a little bit different than the steel frames, but 
you know, rides uh, just aggressively, just as well. Well, in Australian dollars, this is 6,000 for the frame and fork, and then for the steel, it's 4,500. Yeah. Spray painter, you paint spray bikes. Yeah. yeah, you got a few on display here today. I have got a few on display. I've got, got a Trek, I've got a Prova, or I'm going to say a Prova, or three Provas. I've got a Curve, I've got to help the boys over at Bastion with a few over there. This Trek here, this started off as a uh, damaged frame a mate got uh, repaired and um, turned up and said, can you paint it to suit my jersey? And when you have a look at the jersey, you'll realise, um, yeah, pretty out there sort of idea. What colour was this frame originally? Silver. Silver. Silver with white logos, and uh, as you can see, she's a pretty out there uh, idea. So I contacted the guys at Epics, uh, who made the triathlon suit, and said, uh, "Got a guy here wants to do it, and um, you're more than welcome to the photos and blah blah blah." So yeah, they sent me the file for the graphics, and away we went. And uh, probably 60 hours. Um, there's 12 hours just in the rear triangles. When it's finished, yeah. <laughs> Halfway through it, yeah, not so much. Just pull, pulling what's left of your hair out. But um, when you look at the end result, yeah, it's pretty cool. Steve, did, did you do the helmet as well? Yeah, did the helmet. So the helmet was originally white. Right. Um, and he goes, yeah, to complete the package, can you paint the helmet to suit? So, yeah. <laughs> crazy idea it was, but we managed to pull that off too. Curb cycling is just a couple of guys in a shed. Okay. <laughs> All right, nice. That's how we started. We were um, essentially started in fabrication of carbon rims, so wheels. We made wheels in the beginning, and then we started about three or four years ago in titanium frames. And Jesse was like our test rider and took on the Trans America, which is a race from one side of the US to the other, 6,800 Ks. And we tested our first frame, the Belgi, on that, and he won. Proved that it was actually, titanium was super comfortable, but super strong, and was able to handle everything Jesse could throw at it. Curve was kind of born from those adventures. It was essentially, we were pursuing adventures that weren't kind of of the normal variety of where a bike would fit. Sometimes we would make a bike that didn't really exist, so we couldn't use anything at that time. We had to go out and make one ourselves, and that's how like the bike over there is a gravel monster cross bike, which is like a drop bar 29er road mountain bike, which doesn't even make sense. And if you look at the Geo, you're going, it's got super high stack and it just doesn't, the Geo doesn't make sense to conventional design. How does anyone fit on it? And it's like, well, there's a premise for that. So Curve is essentially a, a bike brand that makes titanium and steel bikes to pursue any adventure that you can dream of. So here is the Belgi Air. So the Air wasn't ever supposed to be made into a production. It was one bike to celebrate our founder Steve um, that one man in a shed with his carbon rims it was his birthday and he wanted to integrate carbon through through the bike and then we thought well why don't we release 23 of them it was a collaboration with Bastion Yeah, so Bastion Cycles was started by myself and two colleagues when we were still working for Toyota R&D. Um, when Toyota closed down, or announced they were closing down back in 2014, we had to decide what we are going to do with ourselves and uh, we chose to pursue our passions for engineering and bicycles and bring the two together and yeah, you can see today at the show the, the result of that. Uh, we've got three bikes on display here today, one's uh, two are customers' bikes, one's my business partner's bike. Uh, one is a bike for the owner of African Wildlife Safaris. Uh, that's our that's our road disc model. Used to have a race team. Uh, the other one's our very exclusive Demon project. This one's the Netherlands Commission. So we call them a commission because they're one per country. 
And so this one's heading off to uh, Holland next week. Yeah. And then the third one is our new Super Ligera model, yeah. which is uh, my business partner's bike. And that's a size 62, roughly. It's a custom bike, but it's uh, six kilos. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how much are these frames? Uh, they start at about nine and a half thousand, including GST. Complete bikes uh, between 13 and the sky's the limit, really. But yeah, okay. sort of 25,000 is the most expensive one we've sold. So our block uh, started in Europe two or three years ago. I was one of the founders of the Australian business, uh, but I founded the Australian business with the two Dutch founders who started it in Europe. Uh, and we all share two things, a love of cycling and a love of beer. And so we're trying to combine our two great passions. We call it a natural blonde ale. Uh, and so the best way to describe it is it doesn't fit into any of the classic categories because our brief to the master brewer we worked with when we came up with the recipe we said we want to have the most refreshing beer you can have after a ride. So it was actually a reverse engineered taste. So it's actually a mix of three different malts. So it doesn't fit into any kind of classic category. Absolutely. Well, we add alpine minerals to it. So it helps with rehydration and recovery. So it all helps us ride full gas again the second day after the drink the night before. The easiest way is to order it in the web shop online from our website. Uh, then we also have a stockist network that we're growing out. Devlin, yeah, uh, Devlin started um, probably 30 years ago when I first started riding bikes. Uh, back then, everybody had a steel uh, lug frame, so um, I guess the uh, passion for those that style of bike uh, is born from that. Uh, 30, I've only been building for three years. Uh, I was fortunate uh, in 2005 to uh, move close to Darren McCulloch from the Welland Bikes. And um, I pestered him for a few years with uh, probably silly questions to him, but um, he was very generous with his time, and I learned uh, way more from him than um, he probably thinks he, he 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 taught me. My frames are steel with lug lug construction. Um, I like I guess the simplicity of that construction, uh, the the ease of build, but it, it does allow to build some pretty. Um, well, or high performing bikes. I love pushing the the envelope with lug building. Uh, the bike behind you, um, uh, the, the Crit Pig, uh, Ben Wallace who painted that frame, that's his personal bike. And uh, Crit Pig. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So that, that was the, the, uh, the template that we, we started with. Made of wood, and this blend of carbon into them for the performance advantages. So the, the wood, the natural density of it, takes the road vibration out. So it's a very smooth, silky, silent ride, similar to your steel. But because of the large, the flexibility of the wood, it provides the larger diameter tubes which can make it stiff like carbon. So it's got the best of both. So how much wood would be in these frames? Oh. Yeah. Percentage-wise, uh, percentage the carbon, yeah. about 90% wood. 